Okay, are we live? <laughs> All right, I think we might be live. Hang on a second. Yes, I think we are live. No, not yet. One one fifty nine. Okay, I'm gonna go live right now. Let's see. I don't think we're live yet, but if we are, let me see. Waiting for Ruben Lar to assist. Okay, good. It says going live. Watch it for a second, Tina, and then pause it once it starts. What do you think of that, Ruben? Okay, Mark Page says we're live. Okay. <laughs> I think we're live. <laughs> All right, uh, let me just refresh my stream here to make sure. Someone's telling me we have major feedback. Major, major feedback. Major feedback. All right, let me see here. Okay, I think I think we're good. If someone uh, if someone can tell me on the chat if we do have major feedback, let me know and I'll and I'll try to put my headphones back on. Okay, we're live. Welcome everyone to uh, our Lake and Lara hangout. We're just going to be working and talking shop a little bit. Um, and a lot of you already know Eric, super good friend of mine. We've been friends for over 20 years. One of the most talented people I know. I've learned so much from you, master of composition and yeah, just great design work. So thanks for joining me today. This is our first time. So if there's any technical glitches, please bear with us. Um, there, there are, are technical glitches. <laughs> We're expecting technical. We're also hoping that maybe more than like 20 people show up, maybe. If 20 people show up, we'll be super happy. So we wanted to start off with you, Eric. You've just moved out to, uh, moved out to the um, West Coast. I think Carmel is it? Uh, tell us how it's been going for you out there. Uh, it's kind of funny because you're, this is your, your, your area. Yes. Well, I'm, I, I, lived, I lived in Burbank. It was about an hour away. But that's far for Burbank yeah. standards. Everything over 10 minutes is super far. Yeah. An hour is a long way away. <laughs> yes, too much. So I'm learning about uh, We uh, finished up uh, our work. We were working uh, for, uh, about for about 20 years, years in New York. In New York. Uh, I'm, from uh, I'm from the South. That's the reason why I talk this way. But uh, after but, uh, 20 years, uh, uh, we are on somewhat of a sabbatical out here, out here uh, learning, uh, learning to paint, to paint it's again. It's been a while since I've been doing oil, oil paintings. My background with my mom and dad, we, dad, were, we were in the, in the sign, uh, business sign business murals. And so, and so uh, Carmel, uh, Carmel has got 100 galleries. It's known for its uh, plain air painting. Uh, it's absolutely a beautiful spot i put together like a little show reel for should you. we look at that real quick show all right absolutely. absolutely how's our feedback situation i'm not sure i lowered it on my end check uh check with mark at disney see what he says okay mark says feedback is on eric's side one of you has to turn the volume down on one of your devices it's true we we, we both used to have uh, headphones on but our girls amber and tina are helping us with our commenting so they need to hear <laughs> All right, we'll see how this goes. I love it. So my, so my volume goes down. Yeah. How's that? Okay, let's try that. And your bro says Eric has major echoing or delay. Okay, Eric I'm going to show this video echo. and let's look at this first. It's just like my brother. Just like my brother. <laughs> All right, here it goes. So tell us what this video is about. This is just a little montage of, uh, of your area and kind of your experiences. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Basically, yeah. Basically, yeah. <laughs>
So, so explain what this sabbatical is about that you're doing. Uh, just getting back to painting. You know, um, we work with some really talented people with so many different types of uh, skill sets and learning from them, film workers, uh, uh, cinematography, editing, music, and so much to learn. But just trying to get back to the basics of picture making, which is uh, canvas. Yeah. What you call it analog. Yes. No, totally agree. And I, I mean, I've been feeling the same way too. We've been in, involved in a lot of just printmaking and the technical details of, you know, just getting files and formats out the door to just get, get back to the basics has, has just been, I know it's been helpful for me back to sketching, back to the fundamentals and whether it's a digital or, or an oil painting, super important. And it's kind of interesting, uh, every time uh, you and I have had conversations about digital art, uh, the need to try to go back to the original materials, because canvas has texture, uh, the different types of textures, the brushes react differently, and so on the digital world, you really... You, you taught me that we need to kind of emulate these original mediums because they add, add something that's less plastic. Yeah. Now, you've been, you've been painting for a long time already. So, you know, with this kind of break that you had diving into film and the technical side, what were some, do you feel like you were better before at some things and then you're having to relearn some things or did it all just kind of come back pretty naturally? Uh, I'm, I'm hoping I, I learned some stuff. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, when we started doing film work, uh, several, you know, I got, I actually felt like there's no way I should be working on video, you know, because I'm, you know, me and my brother, we climb ladders and we paint on the side of walls, murals and stuff. And film work has nothing to do with that, you know. I kind of thought film work was a very technical job, is something different, but it's, it's really just picture making. Yeah. In other words, getting back to the, the basics of composition, it all applies to cinematography and scenes and, and filming. Yeah, it's the same thing. And, and in, the more research you would do with film work, you could see that uh, uh, all these early filmmakers, you know, like I was watching Metropolis last night. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, TCM is broadcasting it. And it, they're, they're just paintings. They're just amazing. And here they're watching it, you know, 100 almost 100 years later. So they're based on the fundamentals that we want to learn as artists. Composition, uh, texture. Yeah, I, I feel that way about movies like Casablanca. You can just pause it just about anywhere. And the lighting, the arches, you know, the values, value placement of shapes and silhouettes, everything is just, they are, it's just one painting after another, which is awesome. Hey, show us. Uh, and I feel like going back, yeah. yeah. Or go ahead. Going back to, um, you know, paintings is, you know, is kind of reducing it down to just something simple, uh, which people are still, and people are still, like I said, there's a hundred gallery that were active before this virus hit, and, and people, museums, they, uh, they, uh, have you seen online where people are dressing up, I think Getty sent out a little message to, uh, to, to, do your own little photo shoot of like a famous painting. Paintings paintings People are still in your own style, in like in real life, right? You're taking pictures yeah, and assembling things and props and dressing up as paintings. So these paintings, so these paintings, they still motivate people. And so if you can take the good compositional things that we learn from so many other artists and and, and uh, apply that to your other mediums like animation and filmmaking. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot to learn there. But anyway, enough about me. Me? What's your background? <laughs> yeah. Me. Well, um, I mean, my background is um, is also illustration, and I started out early on when um, you know Photoshop was just starting starting to become mainstream in the studio industry. Um, and I think my biggest growth period. Wait a minute, Photoshop just started to become popular. Well, I mean, it had already, you know, it already had like at least, you know, a couple of versions under its belt, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't in the mainstream. There wasn't a lot of training, you know, at the time. Um, and even Photoshop itself was, was still pretty limited, but I ended up, um, being exposed to it and then using it at a time, um, where, like I said, there were very few people, um, trained. 
Um, but specifically in the studio industry out in LA, my first job was at a prep house, which I still have a great relationship with my old boss, uh, Dwight Escoto. We've been friends for a long time. Um, but he, he, he identified early on that um, you know, creating backdrops digitally was, was going to soon be replacing you know, the old style, uh, traditional you know, guys hanging off ladders, painting murals on the wall. Um, right. What didn't right. change was we needed to learn from those old guys, those you know, old union painters that had just years of painting under their belt. And I think that's where, where the, the industry is now. It's like we're finally going back and trying to you know, discover all those old techniques and apply them you know, to the digital workspace. But my biggest growth period in the studios was having to be as much of a chameleon as I could uh, because every show was different, every script was different. We were just a few people in the shop and you really had to just tailor you know, the, the few digital tools that you did have to either um, you know, um, emulate a, an existing brand that was gonna be used for a prop or you know, recreate F, you know, fake FBI documents for, for a certain scene. And then you had to flip over and, and uh, you know, digitally create uh, what appeared to be oil paintings for another scene that was gonna be shot inside of a museum. So every day it was something totally different. Um, but it really, it very quickly reminded me that the digital tools were just tools. They weren't going to, um, you know, create art for you. You still had to, you know, go back and understand the fundamentals of art. So that's a little bit of my background. And ever since then, I've just, I enjoy learning new software. Um, and, and again, it, you know, you see it all the time with people. The software is not going to create the, the, make the decisions for you. You understanding fundamentals is, is, is really the key to it all. So. Anyway, that's what I try to encourage my students to do too in the limited training that I'm doing online and, and kind of one-on-one. -on -one. So show us what you're working right. on right now. Well, before we okay. do that, here's what I'm thinking. I just got a note from uh, my spy over here that folks from London all the way to uh, Germany are complaining about my feedback. Oh, yeah? Which is nothing new. I've always had problems with my feedback. Turn your, um, you want to turn your, um, your speaker down? So you can like maybe barely hear me. I, I turned it down. What I can do is I can throw my earphones on maybe while you will switch gears and have you draw and I'll, I'll plug it in. The only problem is I have my Wi-Fi plugged into the side and I'll have to pull my, I mean, my internet, my ether. Oh, I see. If I pull that out, I'll be in trouble. Yeah, right? I think you will be. Um, so is that the only way to put your headphones on right now? It is the only way I will have to pull that out. Okay. Well, if we disconnect, just call again and, and I'll log you back on. How about I do that? I want you to continue. I'd like to get rid of the irritating okay. feedback. Okay, I'll tell people what I'm working on. Okay. And by the way, right. if anyone has any questions go. for us as we're going along, like we said, uh, Amber, my wife, and Tina, Eric's wife, we're looking at the feed, and go ahead and uh, just give us a shout out. We'll take a break and answer your questions. Okay, I'm going to take us off. Uh, let's see. There we go. All right, Eric's calling me again. Just a minute. No, he's not calling me again. All right, thanks for your patience, folks. Okay, so my project today is um, I want to create a new YouTube header. And I'm talking about this crazy thing up here. A, a while back, I just threw a quick image on it. And uh, clearly, it's not the right composition and the right size for this particular um, you know, usage that, that YouTube is giving it. Um, so I went ahead and downloaded um, a, a template. And I think there's lots of these templates online. Um, this particular one is from a gentleman named Daryl uh, Eves. Let's see. Yeah, Daryl Eves. I'm just going to go ahead and close this uh, website real quick. But what it is, is it kind of shows you what the full size of this YouTube header needs to be. So basically on YouTube, whether you're advertising or, um, you know, if this appears in a thumbnail, it has to at least have all of this, um, you know, this space in play. Let me turn uh, Eric's little Skype thing off for a second there, frozen in space. But there are certain elements within this canvas you know, where, where this image is gonna be seen most of the time. So that's what I have on this particular layer right here. So anyway, I think, I think the topic that I wanna do is um, maybe some raptors running through uh, the forest, you know, some dinosaurs and like some kind of kid right here. And he's also, you know, I don't know if they're running away from someone or, or just kind of playing around. All right, just keeping an eye here. Okay, good. Um, sorry, just looking at our at our feedback loop here. So I'm thinking that um, we're gonna have a kid right here, and maybe kind of want a nice tight crop actually. 
this is something we can we can figure out later. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this dinosaur. I kind of want this shape to be maybe something like this. Now, when I'm thumbnailing early on, even though I'm trying to keep in mind, you know, what my perspective plans are going to be, uh, just make sure to have that in the back of my head. But I'm not overly concerned with all the details and all the anatomy. I'm just really looking at um, kind of the composition as it, you know, from far away in, in broad strokes, figuring out, you know, um, if I'm going to be working in thirds, you know, how much of this of this drawing is going to feature the dinosaur, how much is going to feature the, the kid. And I do have some reference here for myself um, of this little raptor. Okay, I think Eric's calling me just a minute here. Several people in the chat room are not connected, is what Amber's saying. Well, I don't know how to, you can just go ahead and type in there. Um, they can just refresh the uh, the URL for the feed. Okay. Okay, so while Eric gets online here as well. So I'm thinking, oh yeah, I was gonna show you my, my Raptor reference here. So this is something I pulled off online. Just to get a little reference of how they run. In fact, I'm gonna copy this and I'll just put it right here at the top of my top of my window. And I also have another reference of a kid running. And this is not gonna be the exact, um, pose, but I'm definitely going to be using it as a reference uh, for this side pose. I really love the just strain he's giving in his arms, that really wide gait. Um, and and what, the other thing I'm appreciating about this is what the clothes are doing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be getting some cues from that as well. All right, so I'm coming here. Let me turn these off for a second. Uh, let me just look at this Raptor uh, reference real quick. Yeah, so I think what I'm seeing here is that you definitely want more of kind of this feel, right? That's what I'm liking. Kind of these big wedgy shapes. Okay, so I do, what I am interested in, making sure that my initial shapes have some relationship to what the final is gonna be so I can make some, some good decisions. <clears throat> One tip I, I wanted to share too is when I'm sketching out and concepting, I have two versions of my eraser brush. So if I come over here to my erasers, let me just open this up a little bit, okay? And I'm gonna hit the letter E. Um, Clip Studio comes with a soft eraser, and that looks like this. Uh, but it also comes with a hard eraser, and that looks like that. And I, I find that when I'm just using one or the other, there's two reasons for me to start erasing out of a, out of a drawing. One of them is to completely get rid of things. So for example, um, you know, let's say on this kid, I hate the way this arm is I don't even know what that arm is doing. In that case, I would want to go ahead and into my hard eraser and just completely get rid of that, right? And then go ahead and, and, and you know restate that. At other times, I just want to kill things just a little bit. And I, for example, if I use that hard eraser here in the dinosaur, I'm I'm completely getting rid of everything I, I had before. I don't want that. I just want to soften it so I can restate these lines. In that case, that's when I want to use my soft eraser to kind of just kill that a little bit and you know go back to my pencil and keep going. So instead of changing the opacity, moving from a hard, moving to soft, you know, back and forth all the time, what I've done is I've just moved the hard version of the eraser into another category in the subtool elements. So um, right here I have my soft, and then here on the second tab, I have one that's called delete. So when I use this one, essentially it's it's an eraser that just completely let me try that again. Completely gets rid of everything. All right, Eric's calling again. Hey, bud, you there? I'm here. Okay, let's see if it uh, connected you again here. All right, there you are. And I think I just have to uh, resize your crazy Skype screen right here. What'd you say about me when I was gone? I was very careful not to. All right. Um, just need more feedback. Jason said I can't get through, so other people can get through. Okay, it looks like some people cannot connect for some reason, some but but some people are. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to resolve that. It is our first time. We'll figure it out for the next time. Okay, there you are again. 
So what have you been doing? Well, I'm showing, um, oh, let me share my screen for you again so you can see what's up. Let me just finish this one quick explanation of concepting that I'm talking about. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. There it is. Okay. So I was just saying that sometimes when I'm sketching, I want to completely erase things, and other times I just want to pull things back so that I can restate them. So in Clip Studio, what I've done is I have a separate eraser that's completely 100% hard and a separate eraser that is just soft. And so that way, even with this closed, I've set them to hotkey shortcuts. So that if I really want to erase something completely, I'll just hit my letter R and come here and do a complete erasing, you know, restate th that information. If I want to just do a soft erasure to, you know, to, so I can just restate something quickly, I'll use that soft one. It really speeds up my process of correcting, you know, my existing drawing so that I'm not going just over and over and over everything, completely erasing. I can just come in here, you know, take advantage of what I've already done, continue on, you know, and then also have the option to completely get rid of stuff when I need it. So nice. nice. Yeah, so I don't think you've seen this yet. My This is a YouTube header that I'm working on. I want to have a raptor uh, kind of running through. I think my idea here is that they're, he's going to be running through some some kind of tall grass elements here. Uh, looks like my system got really laggy all of a sudden again. But in YouTube, oh, there it is, starting to lag, OK. But in YouTube, um, uh, with their YouTube banner system, they want you to upload uh, a, one giant image even though for the mo you know for the most part we're gonna we're only gonna be seeing a little strip in the middle, so it does present. Um, let me just undo these marks. Is my computer whacking out here. Um, so it does present an interesting composition challenge, right? Because it has to work with this tiny little sliver in the middle of everything, but also as a larger picture as a whole. I think now would be a good time to talk about. Uh, let's see. Oh, here. Let me read this. Okay. Let people know they can ask questions. Oh, yeah. You want to do, do that, or did I just do it? You just did it. OK, they can ask questions. Can, um, I don't want to throw a wrench in things, but uh, we were going to talk about uh, fear yeah. of, of making mistakes. So this, was a, a, this is a perfect segue after our sound fiasco. <laughs> What is it, I mean, you're a trainer, you work with different creative people and you have online courses to train people. And when you're working with them, how does fear block them? I mean, what, what's the biggest challenge to creativity and, and dealing with failure? Well, I, whenever I see artists kind of getting into art, you know, for the first time in a long time, or maybe just for the first time ever, um, they don't want to show me uh, some of their early sketches that they're working on and so I'll tell them okay you know work on this and be like I don't want to show you I don't want to show you I want to show you yet when in reality the, the only growth comes from the critique right so if right. if you're at a point where you're connecting your ability to do anything in this case we're talking about drawing with your self-esteem or who you are who you are as a person then you're never gonna you're never gonna hit those growth spurts because the only time you're gonna grow is when somebody can look at what you're doing and say you know go in this direction or that it has nothing to do with them personally, right? It could be the best right. best personalities right. in the world. But as your skill set is growing, you cannot connect that to your uh, sense of self-worth, I think. What have you seen? Yeah, absolutely. I feel the same way. My wife always says my superpower is my willingness to make a fool of myself, you know? So yeah. you, ha you have to take chances, which doesn't sound very good, especially if you're talking to a client. Right. Uh, you're gonna you're telling them that you've got to take chances, but is that what it is? I mean, is it about taking chances? I, I don't know. I I think it's I think it's people maybe feeling like oh they have one shot to either make an impression or land a job, um, you know. And if and if that shot's blown, then then they're not going to get another opportunity. It may be the case in some situations for sure. Maybe that just fosters that kind of fear. I just know that for me, you know, if I'm looking for you know, a talent pool or something. I'm, I'm not just going to say, oh, you know, you blew it that one time. I'm actually looking for people who are willing to recognize, okay, this is wrong, but I want to make it better. Um, and I know that's not every environment. So that's part of the problem too, right? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that, that uh, the, environment the environment is 
people want something. You and I described it uh, as the the monkey house, yeah. you know. They want something beautiful. It smells great, but uh, you know, visit to the hot dog factory, whatever illustration you want to use. Uh, it's it can be pretty rough to get to the end result. Yeah. And uh, you can make mistakes, you can start over, you can do something that you weren't counting on doing and you thought, well, it, this is never going to work. And you're, It could be, worse yet, it could be your wife's idea. Uh, but, you know, you listen and then it turns into something. Yeah. So I think the fear factor is where we stop trying uh, or stop looking for opportunities. Yeah. I mean, this, like, to me, this is a good case in point. I have not prepared this picture at all. <laughs> so <laughs> I had a very, I have a very rough idea in my mind of what's happening. Um, and so I, you know, I'm willing to show this to everybody. Um, it's, you know, certainly not a perfect composition yet, but you know, I, I know what my abilities are. I know that I can draw. I know that at some point I'm going to get to something good, but all the early stages of something are always going to be rough and, you know, are not going to be the final solution. And I have to believe that and, and be okay with, you know, right. just kind of throwing it out there and, and kind of moving forward. I, I like, when I'm looking at this, I just want to comment. What's interesting is you, the, the banner is horizontal. That's all they're going to see. Is that correct? It is. And yet sometimes in some occasions, I'm not quite sure when they are yet, they are asking for this, you know, this full resolution. It could be that on certain devices, you know, we end up seeing more on the top and bottom. So it needs to work as a whole as well. Right. Now, if it wasn't going to be top and bottom, would you still draw past your drawing? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so you're saying like, I think for, for the dinosaur, for sure, if we were only, you know, seeing one thing, um, we would definitely want to see, I think, a little bit of the hand and underneath him. Sorry, my computer's really laggy right now, but we'll figure that out the next time we do it. But probably we at least need to see that much, right? Yeah. of the body yeah. motion. I guess, I guess what I like is you're creating an environment and whether or not we see the top or the bottom, we have to believe that, that there's something happening around yes. us. And, if you, and, and in composition, I see this a lot, that people will build a set and they'll design for the set and it feels so hokey because it's all built within the camera view. Correct. I see what you're saying. So even if we weren't going to be seeing the rest of this, uh, resolving it, um, it would be important. Now, here's a question. Um, I'm not quite sure, like I said, what they're running to or from. Is it, was it more dramatic to kind of have the kid in front, where we see his expression, or do we want to, do we want to kind of celebrate this idea that he's running with a dinosaur and have the dinosaur bigger? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you had two people, the the front, the foreground expression would be kind of nice. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, if it's if it's two people, then you have the reaction shot and the uh, action shot together. That's true. So maybe we what's Iron Man? Maybe we had one more person there? up here, or somewhere, right? Like maybe he's right back out here. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, my computer's really lagging. <laughs> it's okay. It looks good. It's uh, it's a it's like a great stop motion. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, show us what you're working on. What's your project for today? I'm having, I'm, I'm having fun watching okay. you. Okay, you were gonna paint something. I'm still I'm, still, I'm, I'm okay. going to. Um, now I'm trying to find this guy right here. Now what if he's looking over his shoulder? Uh, as if there's something else coming behind them we don't see in the yes. frame. Yes. Like we see there's a dinosaur around. I like that. So maybe this kid right here, again, I'm using that hard eraser so I can just completely delete it. So in this case, I think that we might see like... Like kind of this, this feel. Uh, start that over again. Right? Nice. Nice. Yeah. So we get kind of get yeah. that backward movement. Nice. Nice. I think the foreground person would be the person looking over his shoulder. Instead of the background one? 
Yeah. Let's try that. That keeps them looking, that keeps them looking forward. And then you get expressions. Loyal Newville asked you that dinosaur be wearing a mask. <laughs> Loyal Newville is online. Oh my, oh my goodness. Asked, Flash for the dinosaur be wearing a mask. Loyal. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, oh I'm going to do it. Hey, Loyal. Hey, Joan. Hey, Joan. I think they're in California. There. Happy now? Good to hear from you, buddy. All right, so maybe even with this stop motion, you know, version of my brush that's happening here, <laughs> we're kind of getting, you know, this kind of a feel. So when you do a thumbnail like this, how many of these do you do? I mean, you do several of these. You're I do. You know, you're right. Typically, my my my, my normal workflow is to do these really small, but I'm kind of I'm kind of drawing them as if I'm drawing them really tiny as well, right? I'm just trying to keep things really large. Um, right. All right, yep, I think my, my computer's a little bit laggy right now. I'm gonna wait for it to catch up. Let's switch over to you for a little bit. All right, sounds good. Uh, I'm gonna move the camera over here. See if I can move this down, maybe, so I can see. Well, there's a, what I've been doing is trying to get back to painting and, and doing um, some underpainting. Classic Alan Boyle underpaintings, you know, where you are kind of getting a little better idea of the composition and some tone. Yeah. Do you have the Do you have the the uh, photograph of this uh, underpainting? Yes. Let me pull that up. I think I I think I sent it this morning. I'm gonna show it on my screen here. See, now that I know that Loyal is uh, watching, I, I'm, I'm very nervous. I wasn't even nervous. <laughs> so now he's an excellent oil. He is. OK, yeah. hang on. So one thing we're learning about live streaming is it's uh, really taxing on your processor here. Um, yeah. OK, so under paintings. And let me pull this up like this. And we'll pull, pull this up like this. OK, I'm going to show my screen again. <clears throat> And so I like a nice warm underpainting. It's kind of nice to see uh, to paint cools on top of. But I've been, I've been experimenting with some very cool underpaintings too. So what do you what do you decide? You know, what are your decisions when you're doing an underpainting? Is it are you just going, you know, adding a lot of that detail early on, or or how are you deciding how far to go? I'm trying trying to keep the detail broad and just simple. And that's the underpainting. Now there's a, one more photo, which I hate to ask nope. you to do it, but the so, source photo is in there too, I think, of the actual painting. Okay. And, uh, and so on, in my studio here, I actually have a screen with a, with a swivel arm, yeah. Yeah, so that's interesting that's to it. see, um, your interpretation of your, of your source photo. And so what I'm doing is, Right now is I'm just going to take a little um, slow dry, slow, you know, uh, medium, just to slow it down. And, and, uh, and I usually know, like I've been trying to do just a thin wash over, over everything. Even, even if I'm outside painting, I'll, I'll do an underpainting like this, and, and uh, I'll get. Um, a little wash going. Go back up to my painting. Is it, see it okay? Yep. Uh, it's, yep. That's good. So let's see. I look at my painting over here. And so I'll just wash some color in. And what you have right now is completely dry, right? Or, or is it still wet? Yeah, it's dry. Uh, uh, and, I'll just, and I'll just, I'll come in here and just, I guess it's kind of like a scumble. It's where it's, 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 where it's, not, it's, completely it's not completely opaque, opaque just, but it, and it looks kind of rough actually, but I just come in here and just scumble a little bit of the color into the painting. And uh, what it does, it just, it may peek through or it may just be a color note for me. 
Now we're we're about thirty minutes from Norman Rockwell Museum, which I just love that we're so close to it. Um, and whenever they have, you know, like Cornwell exhibits and, and and a lot of the Rockwell stuff as well, it's so great to see. Either it's a you know that warm underpainting just peeking through the colors. I feel like it's just a way to unify whatever you put on the board. You know, to have that single color pop through keeps it within a some kind of a palette even. Yeah, I think he yeah, used a, a Mars violet and a flake, and a flake white for all of his under. Just that's looking awesome. Get those nice cools in the shadows. So, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like uh, you know, I, I keep the uh, paper towel, even though they're even though they're, they're kind of like gold right now, paper yes. towels. Uh, I've been scolded several times in, uh, at my wastefulness. <laughs> Not by team. Okay. But anyway, so I come in here and I, I can scrub in here and, I, and I'm getting a little bit of a form. And I, I suppose you could do it without the underpainting and, and uh, still do it. But I feel like I just have more control. And I can come in here and I, I can explore some colors. My, my source material really doesn't have green in there, but maybe I want to come in here and add a little green. To Why? Piece. Just gut, kind of gut position? feeling? A little gut feeling, a little... But, well, this is a... There's some green in the sky, but I'm just adding some more. And that's the beauty of plain air painting. You're learning from watching, and so it's changing all the time. So you yeah. kind of have to make, make a decision to go with it, and you have to ad-lib as you go. Um... My, 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 my underpainting, underpainting has a very warm cloud, cloud but, I but I might not make it quite warm as my, as my underpainting. So I can go over, I can correct. It just gives you a lot of correction opportunities. So now I'm going to add a little bit of this pink in the sky here. Just I guess that's crazy, but a little pink in there maybe. The weather is so different in... Uh, California. California. I'm trying to get used to not having thunderstorms. You're trying to get used to not having thunderstorms? Yes. Yes. I mean, I, I just grew up. Oh, down south. Around thunder. Yeah. It's just, or even the, you know, in New York, we'd have a big one run through, and here it just rains. I, I, I have yet to hear any lightning for the last couple months. It's like a relaxing storm. And you have an incredible yes, view out your out your backyard. I'm just gonna go find that picture real quick. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, yeah, it's so it's inspirational. inspirational and... um, yeah, studio backyard. This is what your backyard looks like. That's incredible. <laughs> now, did you just take a picture? Is there a bunch of houses behind you in this community that we just can't see, or is it really this rural? Uh, uh, behind it is houses, but it's also that rural. rural. You know, I always have a hard time yeah, with Mars. Yeah, we can't really understand when you say that. Okay, okay. So, um, so I'm painting. Now, now, this is super thin, right? Yeah. I, and I will go over this whole thing with this thin scumble. And to, I've done paintings like this, and then eventually what I want to do is I want to go in and start doing that chunky brush style that I love you know yeah I am no Dean Cornwell but I love looking at his um, let's see if you can see my do you see my canvas yep I'll scoot your camera yeah go you can stay right there nice all right so I'm coming in here and from the Ross family they said uh, good for you Eric Lake <laughs> thanks Ross family now we can't see your canvas anymore. All we can see is your okay. your uh, paints. <laughs> there you go. All right. Let's see. Can you see my yeah, painting now? Yeah, that's good. Wow, you really put some some serious blue. So up I'm there. pop. Yeah, I'm popping some color in now, here, and that's where I want to start folding some opaque color in. And I can, you know, wipe the paint off, tease it out a little bit. Very cool. And let's, and let's say I'm going to come in here with some, a little, a little bit more of an opaque white. I'm just kind of, white. I'm just kind of jump. So usually you would go through and just really hit the whole thing with the same tones, right? 
Yeah, I think so. And then it's I can just be a little bit more accurate when I come in here. Uh, and it's, you know, you know this, 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 this California style of impressionism, they call it, it's kind of fast and loose, but it's not painted fast and loose. It's Yeah, it's thoughtful. You know, yeah, it's thoughtful and having, you know, the actual underpainting allows me to be more thoughtful, a little bit more deliberate. A little sergeant style. I, can, I, I feel the same way about, um, you know, I'm talking to my artist friends and we're concepting things and everything. And sometimes people see something I've done or some, something, you know, another concept artist has done and it feels quick and immediate and just like spontaneous. Um, but it really, it, it isn't really always that way, right? It's, I'm sketching in a loose style, but I'm, but I'm not going super fast. And I'm wondering too, if, if kind of nowadays people are used to seeing stuff on Instagram and on YouTube time lapsed and all sped up, we do get a, a false sense of how fast people are or aren't maybe. Um, but a lot of the accomplished artists clearly are not painting as fast as, as what we're seeing on these time lapses. No. And it, it kind of plays with people's minds a little bit. I'm finding people who are you know, struggling to get better and they just feel like I should be drawing fast. The answer is not really. Um, even though something yeah, I mean, appears could, you know, loose, it still has to be thought through. And that, you know, that's where a lot of that structure is going to come into play. Yeah, it can uh, help you. I mean, you may be making some bad decisions by watching those. You may be like a, one of these teenage girls in Burbank that gets a nose job because of her iPhone. Because of what? Oh, you haven't heard no. about that? These, uh, these, ki- these girls were getting nose jobs because they were photographing selfies and it made their nose look bigger. No. And they didn't realize it was lens distortion? <laughs> so, yeah, distortion can, can play with our... That's unfortunate. Since our, our senses. Had to be in Burbank, right? Where I'm from. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so anyway... That's, That's awesome. Where I'm at. I'm working with this. I'm teasing, I'm teasing this in. That's very cool. I do, I do want to go back with uh, even thicker color for some things. And what what areas do you think that I would probably paint thick? I don't know. I I imagine you know some of those those brights up in the corner. You know, just hitting those highlights of the clouds, get that volume in there. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think so, and I think that. The, uh, I've, seen I, I've seen a lot of artists like Loyal and Island. I do that, I do that with opaque, opaque whites and, and or, like or like flake white and then glaze over it. Yeah. But the, but idea, of the idea of building your whites up, of course, of course can, can can make them stand out in a physical, in a physical painting. painting. Yeah. Because you because you, you actually it it lights differently. You know when you come in here and you start putting this this white in here. Amber just told me that Gail Chambers is on line two. Oh, now, oh, now I'm really now, nervous. Now you're nervous. This is the, the best painter of yeah, all time. Yeah, she kind of ruined my life in some ways because everything gets compared to what oh, she yeah. does. Even though yeah, I love her so Yeah, and she's so humble. So, yeah, it's, it's embarrassing. <laughs> and by the way, uh, maybe we shouldn't say she's online since she's probably supposed to be working. Oh, that's true. Oh, this is that's her work. She, she, yeah. She's, she is training us, so she, <laughs> she is working. Speaking of uh, our good friend, Alan, let me get this. It's on my wall. Excuse me. This is something I, he's, he's passed away now, unfortunately, but um yeah i just picked up i don't know if you you can can you see my screen eric my webcam uh if you move the picture a little bit oh no you can't see my camera though right no no No. okay well i'm showing well here i'll swing it around no no you can't see me my camera you can't see my face no on your screen can't see it oh i thought you could uh there's there's a little tiny picture right in front of it i wonder if i can move it i'm showing this old um oh there it is i see it this great art, you know, what do you call these things? I, I'm embarrassed that I don't, I can't remember. Oh my goodness. Why don't we ask somebody watching what that is? I think that's a set. It is a set, right? And, and it says auto space. So, I mean, it's, it's like a set, but I think it's a different company. Um, 
but yeah, I just man the 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 fineness of of these letter forms are just awesome here. Just old style typography. And what does it have on here as well? We got we got the whole alphabet and got these. Oh yeah, little registration tick marks, right? I mean, that's yeah. uh, how yeah. you would turn turn your letters in the olden days. It's great stuff. <laughs> I wouldn't know. In the olden days. I did do some <laughs> Ruby Lith work, but that was just in junior high. I didn't do it in production. All right, so I'm going to stop right here, but I got something done. Yeah, I love it. Now, usually you wouldn't this be going like that uh, intense, right, right away. So you just kind of moved ahead a little bit. Yeah, I think... I think what I would want to do is is uh, scumble over everything a few times, and you know I could introduce uh, some variants in in uh, hues, yeah. and then that would be kind of my color note for adding to this scene. Yeah, no, I like that. Hey, can you you were going to show um, some of your your uh, famous artist course books? Oh, you have yeah. some there. Hey, Tina. Let's see, Tina, can you grab that famous artist book right there? Which one? Actually, the Walter Foster book's in the room. Okay. Why, That's right, I forgot to pull them out Why can't morning. I find this layer right here? Back to this, Back to this idea about fear. Yes. <laughs> so, I think... Uh, I need to name these things because my machine, my machine is so laggy. Looking back, okay, that's that kid right there. This is my trees. All right, thanks, babe. So, so this, this is a is classic nothing. blast from the past. So you see my yeah, screen here? See. These. I found a whole stack of these oh, those are Walter great. Foster books. And this one um, is uh, on uh, portraits. This guy, uh, Foster, was from Laguna Beach. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he was from Laguna Beach, and he would find all these artists. This one I had since I was a kid. Oh, uh, that's, that's awesome. Hang on. Let's show and us that this, cover this again is just a, so we can see it. A, how trashed it is. This, this one, yeah, this one has been trashed. Now, that way awesome. back before even Letra set, we would copy and paste the typefaces. Yeah, that was way back. I got a brand new version of that. Chart pack Letra set. Yeah, this is Bodoni. What Loyal's telling us. Um, did you? What's that one? Flowers. There? Awesome. On flowers. Now open one of those. Like th these are just featuring artists, or did they have how tos as well? They would break it down exactly how to do it. Okay. And I have to say, I haven't looked at these as much as I should. I mean, that's the way we are with our. But look at this. Just breaking down a flower. But one of the things I did is Tina wanted me to paint a uh, California poppy, so let me okay. get that. And I'll put it up here. You have to be careful. This thing right here on the easel is like a guillotine. You smash your finger. All right, there. This is a California poppy. Oh, that's looking great. Now, you were just telling me the other day that um, you had never painted or you didn't consider yourself a, a floral painter, right? Uh, no, uh, no, I don't consider myself a floral and painter. And so why did you do that? <laughs> it's bad enough being called an artist. <laughs> uh, but you enjoyed well, it. Tina, well, you know, I am painting for a living, so... Uh, and I got so much feedback about that from Instagram, you know, is this flower. So, again, uh, I, I, I tried something I didn't think about. I heard a critique from someone. I benefited from it. I've got my training. So you got all out of your need, comfort zone. All I've learned about painting from Walter Foster. Yeah. But, I mean, and, that's what uh, we're talking about, right? It's getting out of your comfort zone. Well, even landscape painting. I would I would have... I don't know. It's just totally new. It's one of the, uh, you know, some people paint portraits beautiful, but when it comes to landscape, that's one of their challenges. And so going out and trying something new, you know, doing something I haven't done before, uh, learning from, you know, plein air painting is amazing because you're setting up and you're looking at a scene longer than anyone else 
looks at a scene. You know, and there's people walk by and they glance at things. And move and on. So you learn. Yeah, you learn. There's so much. It's about seeing, yeah. right? Looking and any how. Let's oh, wait. Else. We got to oh. also give shout outs to our moms who are listening. Oh, my goodness. Hey, mom. That would have been horrible. Hey, mom. I really hope that you're able to be watching right now. <laughs> this is the first time my mom ever logged on to YouTube, I think. And I hope you missed the whole fiasco in the beginning. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, my messenger. You know, I, I put this little kid in here, and it, and I wasn't even sure <laughs> Let me have to... what time period this is, but I kind of <laughs> like that he's, he's wearing glasses. Ruben, I'm going to ask you this question someone sent us. Who was this? T? It was me. Oh, Tina. Oh, Tina, <laughs> Tina asked the question. question. Apparently, no one is actually we need watching. We need more. No. Question. no. Um, question here. What if you don't like what you paint, Ruben? You want to answer that? What if I don't like what I paint? Um, well, that's a good question. I, I feel like I try to work something out in the moment to the point where I like it, and then I move forward. Um, it, but what that also means is if I'm not liking it, I'm not understanding how to resolve it in my brain. And so, it, you know, if I if I get to a point where, you know, 40 minutes later or, or an hour later, I just cannot fix this just about every single time. Well, the immediate thing is to flip my campus. <laughs> as soon as I flip something, as I've just done right now, you know, we know this as artists looking at it from another perspective usually starts right. to tell us like, right. oh, that leg is too long or the you know the head's too short whatever but if i can't if i'm doing all my normal tricks right. and i can't do it i'll always sleep on it come back the next day come back in th two or three days until i completely forget about the thing because i want what i want is an, a gut reaction because i can do this to other to other artists right like someone shows me their work instantly i can say in my mind at least whether i'm right or, or wrong but i can say oh that's too big too short too long it needs this why can't i do it for myself is because i've just been looking at it too long and I'm in the monkey house like we were talking about before. So when I don't like a painting... You want to explain the monkey yeah. house? What, is, what do we mean by the monkey, the monkey house? house? is when you're, you're in the monkey house so long that you forget that it smells like monkeys until someone else walks in and is like, it stinks in here. So we get, we get, that, we get into that own zone, right? But, but how come I can critique so quickly someone else's work, but then I can't figure out what's wrong with my own piece? Well, A, I need to ask somebody if, you know, many, many days have gone by and I still can't figure it out. Of course, I just need to call one of my buddy friends who I trust and, and say, hey, what's wrong with this piece? But most of the time um, when I sleep on it and I come back, it allows me to my brain to completely forget about it. And then I have a gut reaction to it again. And I usually find that I can resolve it to a point where I like it. I have been trying to do three things at once. I have three paintings. Okay. And when I stop, when I stop, stop like. I can, I can another, yeah. another one. Yeah, that's a that's a good technique. But I mean, that's the same concept, right? It's stepping so, away and coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And looking at it, um, refresh your browser. and getting some getting some good feedback. I think that's important. Yeah. Uh, finding somebody that's not going to just compliment us and tell us everything is perfect. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. So. Well, we got um, it may we got seven minutes left on our uh, on our stream here, so we're not uh, completely taking up people's time here. Um, I wanted to share real quick. Uh, let me go back to my double double camera here. By the way, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep working on this YouTube header, and I'll share it online, and we'll see how it uh, how it re resolves from here. But you and I were talking earlier about the famous artist course a little bit. And I found this great book online. Oh, yeah. Drawing Lessons yeah. from the Famous Artist School. The red one. You're not paying attention to this me. This one? I'm sorry, the red it's book. It's a red book. I'm, oh, sorry. Yes. Oh, yes, that one's amazing. <laughs> Those are all the highlights. It's all the highlights from the Famous Artist Course. Um, and, and so it actually goes through, uh, let me get into the thing here, and it tells you you know, who were all the contributors, a little bit of the history of Famous Artist School. Um, and then it goes through and not only breaks down uh, the background of those particular artists, but it also, it, it kind of modernizes some of the exercises that were in the original book. Um, so for example, let me find a good one. 
I should have looked at this before. But just exercises like this. Um, illustrate a fiction or a nonfiction story of your choice from three different perspectives. Create a close-up of a character described in the story. Home in on a compelling aspect of the plot or storyline. Design an image that emphasizes the story setting. Notice how the sequence of images each contributes to the overall visual narrative. So uh, again, I, I feel like in some ways this is the um, the antidote to, to so much overwhelming stimulus on, on social media where you're just seeing people's work over and over and over. And just taking a book like this that's analog, going through the exercises. These are tried and true exercises, you know, from times past. And they're not, you know, they're, they're nothing that no one's ever thought of before. But it's just a real simple way to focus on specific disciplines one at a time. And they do, I can't, I, I should have. That's interesting. Yeah, go ahead. That book um, was based on the famous artist course that was created by a society of illustrators. Yeah. And, and I did some research, and uh, it turns out that they had a separate company, and they made a lot of money off this uh, yeah. this course. And uh, it, they have a whole series of these books. Uh, the C1 so you have an original one there, right? With all the highlights. Yeah, this is original. I found this at a flea market. Hang on. Something, something weird in, is happening uh, with your camera. Let me just reset you real quick. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, it's it's a fantastic one. One one of the founding members is Norman Rockwell. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and they they have like some of the top illustrators break it break down not just oil painting and sketching and gouache, but also layout design, photography, uh, and then they have newer courses. Yeah, for cinema. And I just went in and I just started drawing right in the book. I know that's like a some people will cringe, but I just, I'm just doing the exercises right next to it. And I just now show it. the name of the book so that if anybody wants to get that one. Drawing lessons from the famous artist school, classic techniques and expert tips. It's like a, it is, it's like a uh, cliff notes of famous yeah. artists. Yeah, that's, I got to get that. I saw it, but I didn't buy it. Well, maybe we could spend just like five minutes. Some people are saying they have questions in the chat, but I don't see them here. Make sure that people are not asking questions in the comments of the video and that they're actually in the live chat. Let me just, well, while, yeah, go ahead. While you're waiting on those questions, also I had that mural design. I just want to kick out there. I have a, a nice wall outside the studio here. Did you send me a picture of that? Yep, there's a, a picture. You don't have to show it. We're, we're wrapping up, but basically I'll post a photograph of the wall on my Instagram and i uh, just love to get some ideas and steal a concept from somebody. Pick people's Is there brains. a picture right here on your, do you want me to, are you gonna show it on your Instagram? I'll show it okay. on Instagram. It's, we only have a couple more minutes. All right. Well, what do you think? This was our first uh, little live stream. Uh, we had a few technical glitches, but it was great having everyone. And I guess we'll see, you know, if we, if we do it again, if there's anything people would like to see us talking about and doing. Please leave comments in the, um, you know, once the YouTube video posts. Um, that's stuff, you know, something we can talk about in the future. We're hoping to do more just working and talking and, you know, sharing tips from our own analog and digital workflows. And we're hoping that everybody is staying safe and taking care of their loved ones. And um, we hope they're drawing. Yes. Drawing is a great way. Oh, Amber, do you have, yes, did you see? a couple thanks shout out to Aaron Fortin who took a picture of them for me okay <laughs> one is Eric um, from nothing fits here Eric can you please give us a virtual tour of your studio if possible? someone wants a virtual tour of your studio are you prepared for that or should we do it on uh, the next round uh, I could just move this around a little bit okay. we might have to do it on the next round I have a, a big window here that I've closed up that's the and that's that big view that we saw earlier right uh, that's behind the oh, okay. the place uh, here. But um, yeah, we gotta. Maybe next time I'll set up my Best studio Buy too. Will, and will open. That way I can feature um, some of my top. Uh, hang on, let me just. Okay, Amber has another question. Amber. From Aaron Fort and Ruben, what is the window to set up your favorite tools? The window to set up my favorite tools from Aaron Fortin. I will show you right now. 
there's something weird happening with our little screen screen setup here. But okay, um, the window for my favorite tools are is this little quick access panel here. I'm in I'm in Clip Studio, and so what this lets me do is drag anything uh, from the tool area uh, right into this little spot here. So I can just drag that, drag that. Any of my favorite tools, I can also drag them up into the command bar. If I right click, I can delete them. Um, so this is a great way to just identify, you know, what your workflow is. Um, so you're not just hunting and pecking all over the place. And I have a different set for concept drawing. I have a set for animation in this tab. I have another tool that I always use for, for my whiteboards. It's just a one tool right there, but it's real quick for me to get to. So yeah, good question. Nice. Another one. Another one? From Andre Vallette. What is your slow medium native? Oh, um, Xavier Vallette wants to know, uh, what's your slow medium made of? Uh, right, here. right here. Can you see, Can it? You see it? Yes. It's Gamblin, and, it's and it's I'm sure it's got it's got uh, some, of the some of the basic uh, petroleum carcinogenics. But basically, you can check out uh, this is Kid Slow Dry from Gamblin. Uh, a lot of different brands. I don't have a particular brand I like, but it, it basically dries in 24 hours. So awesome. it stays wet and you can work it. Uh, and that is a lot of like playing around. You can go with liquid that dries in a couple hours or they have a version that dries in five hours. And then the, then you have to figure out your pigments because they all dry different speed, speeds too. Yeah. So it's just a lot of experimenting. Okay, cool. Which I, I'm in the middle which of. Love. One more. Tim Cho asks, Ruben, how can you emulate the same effect in digital media stumbling over warm underpainting? Tim Cho wants to know how to paint like an artist in digital. That's a big question, Tim Cho. Tim, thanks for throwing. Tim, thanks for just throwing that giant fireball right at the end. Yeah. yeah. Tim, Tim Cho, the most one of the most talented artists digitally, digitally yes. also is asking us that question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Embarrassing. Interesting. <laughs> Tim, we'll get into that next time. Scan the canvas, Tim, and paint over it in digital. Okay, one more. Aaron Hardesty, question for Eric. What's your favorite thing to paint? Aaron Hardesty, what's your favorite thing to paint? Mm, my next painting. <laughs> That's a cop out. I haven't, I haven't found it. I like, uh, I don't know. I mean, from what we see you paint, I mean, I think the your easiest go to that you, that you, you always do successfully are like these big trees and roots and, you know, plant systems, which are really beautiful. I mean, you've been doing that for a while. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the tree. I, is I think my root, dinosaur. tree roots. For people who know you, that's your favorite thing to paint. Tree roots. I like.